On a clear day, you can see forever. This is Clear Word Wednesday. A few moments in God's Word, designed to help you to see God's eternal purpose. Join us as we see clearly into God's Word. Rescue 
Today on Clear World Wednesday, we're looking at the thought, God has not forgotten, and it's taken from Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, where the Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Have you ever said, God, why are you doing this to me? Or have you ever been daily complaining about some real or perceived wrong done to you? Have you forgotten God's word to you? Today on Clear Word Wednesday is a clear reminder of God's faithful promises. Take heart, take hope. God has not forgotten, and neither should you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so very much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. Thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing for us, and all that you will do for us. We pray, dear God, that as this message goes forward, that your love and kindness will shine through and that your graciousness will be seen in the message. Help us to remember that you have not forgotten, and neither should we. Let this be our daily reminder, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, question number one has to be, why do we forget? So, here's a scenario. Yesterday you went before God, and by yesterday I mean sometime in the past. There was a huge bill that you had to pay. Let's give it a figure, $23,000. I know that's a large one, but let's just say that's the figure. You went before God, and you said, God, you know that this is a lot, and I can't take it on all by myself. Please help me. Surely you knew that he could do it because you've seen him do it time and time again. And so as you went before the Lord and prayed and believed for sure, you knew that the answer was on the way. You didn't know how, you didn't know when, but you dared to believe that God would do exactly as he said he would do. So days later, a check comes in the mail from a long lost uncle or a long unknown uncle. And a day after that, a rebate from the government. A couple of days after that, somebody stops by with some cash saying, oh, I forgot I owed you this and on and on. And these are real scenarios that happen to real people, so I'm not just pulling it out of thin air, beloved. But, oh, today comes, and you owe $50 on your phone bill, and you fear that you're going to be unable to be in contact with that person who needs to call you about a certain job you're trying to get. And you're worrying, and you're fearing, and you're panicking. And before you go to God, you try that uncle again to see if he has an extra 50 or that friend who might have owed you. Because all you can remember from the past is that there was a tangible, literal answer. You didn't see the divine hand of providence, and so therefore, you went to what you knew. Why we forget? Number one, we doubt God. We doubt that He could do it 
again. We doubt that the immense miracles that we've seen in past times can be repeated today. But also, we're dealing with a human flesh that has been bombarded for the past 6,000 years. And the things that weighed heavily on Adam weigh on us, but double, triple, quadruple so. So, because of the weakness of the flesh, we forget. We can barely hold up. Maybe it was two minutes ago that God did something amazing, but two minutes later, he gets some earth-shattering news, and all of a sudden, your world is ripped to shreds. And the promises of God are made of none effect. But friends, keep in mind that the Bible says, He who never sleeps, he who never slumbers, never forgets. And God is holding on to the promises that he made for you. Now, I come to you today because I want you to have good news as we head forward into the rest of 2020. But I want you to be reminded of this, beloved. Even though fear and doubt and panic set in, we have a God who never fails. We have a God who never forgets the words that he speaks to us. He says, you will forget, but I won't forget. Friends, you know the stories of the Israelites, and it's like a yo-yo. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down. It's an escalator, elevator type paradigm. But every time, friends, every time they cried out in their distress, God came through. God raised up a deliverer. God raised up a judge. God raised up a prophet. God raised up a king. Friends, every single time when they remembered the Lord and remembered his promises, God never left them to their own devices. What a God. And he'll do the same for you today, my friends. Why should you remember? Simply this. Because God is faithful and just. As you build up remembering, as you continue to lay hold of the promises of God, you'll see without a shadow of a doubt that God is faithful. And see, friends, as you continue to lay hold of the arms of omnipotence, you're building up faith and hope. You're building up trust in the everlasting arms. You're learning to lean on them. So while the human side of you may forget, while the flesh may fail because of doubt, fear, and anxiety, remember that the Bible says that the inner man, the spirit man, is being renewed day by day. Lay hold on the claims of Almighty God. Trust his promises. Know for sure that as you continue to trust him day after day after day, your mind is being formed, your mind is being fashioned, your mind is being molded according to his likeness. And so the mountains that you faced yesterday don't have to be eclipsed by the molehills you face today. And the big challenges that await us in the future don't have to alarm us because, friends, here's the secret of the overcoming. We're holding on to God's faithfulness. In Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, the Bible says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Friends, this is awesome good news. This is the greatest news that you can take with you into the future. Because the Ancient of Days is saying that those things that we've seen him do in the past, he'll do it again. He's not a God just for now, but he's a God that is yesterday today, and tomorrow. Not only is he an on-time God, but he is the ever-present God. The Bible says he'll never leave you 
nor forsake you. So friends, while we may forget, oh friends, he will never forget us. I know the plans, it says in modern translations, that I think towards you, says the Lord. Plans of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. Friends, God understands what we're going through here in 2020. Believe me, he does. And yes, friends, yes, those questions that you have are valid. He doesn't brush any of them aside. Why are you doing this to me? He says, I am not. He says, your sins have separated between you and your God. He says that these things are a result of 6,000 years of earth being in its fallen condition. But if you take hold of my strength, I will make your weakness strong. I am not doing this to you, he says. You're doing it to yourself. The world is doing it to you. Satan is doing it to you. But everything that happens to you, I'm doing it for you. Friends, when you're going through as you're going through and you see no hope in sight, don't ever feel that God has forsaken you. In fact, remember that little sweet poem, Footprints in the Sand. Know that in your hardest days, know that in your roughest times, He it is that is carrying you. Take heart. Take hope, friends. As we conclude, I want you to understand something, friends. As we head into the remainder of 2020, as we close out this unique of years, I want you to learn a lesson. Hold on to God's faithfulness. In Psalms 37, 25, the Bible says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed back in bread. Friends, God has not forsaken, God has not forgotten you. You know, friends, in the hustle and bustles of this life, when things seem to go so wrong and you seem not to have anything to give God thanks for, I want you to be thankful that you're alive. I want you to be thankful that you have breath in your body. I want you to be thankful that there's a God above who showers you with tender love. Just remember that. That through all the chaos and crisis and confusion, through all the calamity, through all the craziness, friends, I want you to remember that God's got this. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of peace and not of evil. He says, yeah, a mother may forget her suckling child, but I will never forget you. He says, you are graven on the palm of my hand. He says, we are the apple of his eye. My beloved, lay claim to God's faithful promises. Do this, my friends. Daily set up in your mind a promise. Don't go a day without reciting to yourself one of God's precious promises. By these, you'll be building yourselves up, oh friends, because we're heading into an uncertain future. We're heading into a future that would make 2020 seem like child's play. Believe you me, I don't like sharing this, but it's the truth, and you need to be prepared. You need to understand that right now the things that you're going through are building you up for those coming days. And so, friends, do not despise these days. Do not take these days for granted. Do not think that God, friends, do not think and do not say for one moment that God has forsaken you. In fact, friends, he's doing the best that he can under the conditions that he has. He's building you up, friends, and he's fortifying you for the coming crisis. But you know what, friends? You're not alone. You're never alone. And you will not be alone because if you put your hands in the hand of the Master, friends, I promise you, God's got this. As we close out, not just this message, but the first nine months of 2020, the first nine months of what has become 
one of the most unique years in human history. Friends, they claim to the promises of God, nor without a shadow of a doubt that God is real, God is still on the throne, and God has not forgotten you. It's your turn, my friends. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Put the Lord daily before you. Meditate upon the goodness of the Lord day and night. When tempted to complain, my friends, when tempted to complain, think of the wonderful love and kindness of God, all the things that he has done for you, the greatest thing that he has done for you in coming to this world and dying to take away the sin of the world. Friends, you may not see it now. It may not appear so as yet. But there's a great day coming when all of this will be over. That's what Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 envisions. That's what Jeremiah 29, 11 is pointing to. And then in Revelation 21, 1 to 5, friends, I encourage you to read those verses. Revelation 21, 1 to 5. The Bible says that there's coming a day when there'll be no more pain, no more sorrows, no more crying, and no more tears, for the former things are passed away. Oh, my dear friends, Look to the future. Look to the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being with us today on this Clear Word Wednesday. We invite you, dear Lord, to take full charge of our lives. Father, we know that we have made shipwreck of our faith in 2020. We know that we've been hot, we've been cold, we've been up, we've been down. We've moved slow, we've moved fast. Friends have forsaken us. Family has died on us. Jobs have left us. Houses have come down crashing on us. Houses have burned around us. Waters have flooded everything that we held dear, all gone. But you, God, remain unchanged. You, Jesus Christ, remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. And for this, we thank you. Dear precious Lord, help us to remember, Lord, that you have not forgotten us. Father, in our darkest days, O oh Lord, put a hedge of comfort around us. Lord, embrace us and envelop in your amazing arms, O oh Lord. Send all the angels heaven can spare, O oh God, when we are bombarded with all the darkness of the evil one. Father, help us to pray daily. Help us to be encouraged. Help us not to lose our hope, our faith, our love, O oh God. And Father, as I close, I pray for some man, some woman, some boy, some girl under the hearing of my voice who is going through such anguish, such pain that no human eyes can see, no human ears can hear. But they're going through knowing that You'll never leave them. You'll never forsake them. Knowing that they're never alone. As long as you are in the picture, they're never alone. He who never sleeps, he who never slumbers, watches over them both night and day. I pray, dear Lord, that this beautiful, beautiful assurance will continue to be their blessed assurance all the day long even as we get ready to go through the final crisis. May your people be fortified, O oh Lord, to face the coming onslaught. May we be ready no matter what. O oh God, help us to be ready. Help us to stay ready and be found in the Lamb's Book of Life on the day that Jesus calls our name. We pray in his and no other's name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you so much, my dear friends, for joining me today on another Clear Word Wednesday. By the grace of God, 2020 has not found you too bad off. As we come to the final three months of this year, friends, it is my fervent hope, it is my fervent prayer that you will continue to remember the Lord as he continues to remember you. God bless you. You have been listening to Clear Word Wednesday. Join us again next time for more insight on God's clear word.